G'day everyone, just a short video this one. I just wanted to add this as kind of a little bit of an extension to the last video I did about designing your own guitar pedal effect, um, what you need to learn. One thing I missed out, which I thought was worthwhile me doing just a little separate short video to tack on to the end of the other one or link to the other one, is breadboarding. <clears throat> if you're going to be designing your own effect, you're gonna be doing a lot of breadboarding. I didn't mention this in, the la in that video, so I thought it would be worthwhile just adding it on. So what is a breadboard in case you've never seen one before? It looks something like this, big plastic board with a whole bunch of connectors. So if we look at, if we look at it on a, on a connectivity level, these five holes are connected, the next row of five holes are connected, next row of five holes, and then there's a whole series of them of 40 or something, uh, 60. Um, there's 60, um, 60 rows of five, and then another 60 rows of five down the bottom. And then up the top here, you've got I've, I've marked them red and black because I use them for power rails and ground. Um, so so uh, plus nine volts or whatever, whatever voltage you're using across on the red one and then the black one is ground and then that's usually separated in the middle and then you've got another two there. Um, so, so everything marked black up to halfway of the board is connected and everything marked red up to the, up to halfway through the board is connected as well but I've put little links as you can see because I just want them all connected all reds and all blacks this isn't how every breadboard works just how this one is you've got to get a multimeter continuity mode and check it yourself just to, just to get your head around um, how it works but that is a breadboard and that is the basic functionality of a breadboard and excuse me if you are planning to design your own pedal effects you will need to know how to use one and become proficient with using one because every every effect that you design you need to check. It might sound good on paper, the formula that you've come up with and the frequencies and the cutoffs and the gain and the this and the that, but until you actually test it on a breadboard or, or you know, just until you actually test it, you're not gonna know for sure. It's not recommended to design an effect and then go straight to production on the fabrication side of things. It's a big waste of money because you end up getting it back and you'll go, oh, I forgot this and I forgot that. Sometimes when I'm lazy, I do that. If it's a simple circuit, oh yeah, nah, that'll be fine. I'll just, I'll just tack this on the end. You know, something simple like, oh, I'll just put tone control on the input or I'll just do this or I'll just do that. I get it back. I just do a run of three prototypes from, you know, OSH Park or whatever. I get them back. I test them. And I'm like, oh my God, it doesn't work the way that I intended it to. And then I get back to the theory side of it and I do it properly. I go, okay, let's breadboard it this time, make sure that it works properly, just to double check. It's much quicker to check your effect on a breadboard than it is to check it on a PCB. Um, so yeah, it's lazy to go straight to a PCB. I've done it before and, I, and I've pulled it off sometimes, but sometimes you're just wasting your time building effect that doesn't work. So just check it on a breadboard first before you go to product uh, PCB fabrication, even in a prototype version, like a OSH Park prototype, it's still a waste of time and money. So yeah, test it on a breadboard first. That's the way you're supposed to do it, and that's the best way to do it, of course. So that is, that is kind of a critical step with designing your own guitar pedal of effects. Um, once you've got your head around some of the theories and or some of the maths, or um, even if you've just got a couple of effects that you want to splice together, um, you still should check it on the breadboard. You think that, you know, oh, the, um, uh, the Big Muff Tone Control will work great with a fuzz face or with whatever else until you, until you actually put it together and then you have issues, you know, it doesn't sound quite like, maybe it works perfectly, but it doesn't end up sounding the way that you thought it would. Um, it's just not a good suited tone control for a fuzz face or whatever, you know, just, just test it on a breadboard first is the point of this video. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd do a quick uh, sort of little mini mini update um, as far as that goes. Test it on a breadboard first and it will save you a lot of time in the long run. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more do-it-yourself guitar pedal videos and stuff like that. Cheers.